So, INICT November 22 done. Hope you have done well as per your expectation. Okay, sometimes results is not in our hand. But what we can do? At least we put a maximum effort what we can put. Okay, so this paper is done. But yeah, it's very essential to recall few questions which will help us for next exam for NEET PG 2023. Yes, these questions are there and pediatrics. So many good questions are there. Yes, I am Dr. Sanjay Khatri, your pediatric educator. I will be discussing all those questions and we try to. Those questions are memory based. I got from a few learners. I am thankful to them that they share those questions to me. Yes, we will discuss those questions. Try to make some good answers, correct answers, few choices here and there. These questions may repeat. Yes, these questions may repeat. So, before that, you know this. Med Minds Ultra Combat 2.0. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. 50 questions. 50 questions in 60 minutes. And look at the prices. MacBook, iPad, Mobile, Kindle, Smartwatch, Stethoscope stethoscope in the last yes but what you need nothing to lose just come on the platform separate questions for sep each year and last time it's so much success yes many learner receive good gift so nothing to lose wait for this enroll 20 november 27 12 pm if you want to enroll don't forget to use dr sanjay live to come into the this platform okay so be prepared i am again repeating combat 2.0 november 27 yes something is there need pg 2023 achiever batch so be a part of this batch and see how fast educator goes in this batch achiever batch achiever means yes we put our best effort to give you the maximum and you will get the good rank yes go with our experience and you find strike rate of 85% because team analyze everything. So they find it's very useful. It's with the demand of a student. So registered start from 21st November. Duration 4 month. 4 month. Trust on us. Trust on us. Yes. This is MBBS Prof 2 package. Everything is there for you. Start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. Now come to the question easy question so many times we have discussed this question in our growth and development class yes yeah sukhbir that we will discuss sometime handedness usually determined by the age of what answer you all put one baby if you see a baby whether he is going to left handed or right handed this is the query so preferentially till Three year of age, child can use both the hand with equal dominance. Yes, he can use the left hand, he can use the right hand. So before three year, you can't identify that this person is going to be left handed or this person is going to be right handed. If two year old child preferentially use right hand, it means something is wrong in the left hand. Or preferentially use the left hand, something is wrong in the right hand. So handedness. Determined by the age of 3 year. Handedness determined by the age of 3 year. By the 3 year, if child is 3 year, then we can determine the which handed is this. Left handed or right handed. So, remember this and we discussed this so many times. Handedness usually determined by the age of 3 year. I hope, yes, all of you put it right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, 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 now. Match the following teeth eruption with their respective ages. Yes, I may be one or two year here and there with the terms of ages. But this I got from the learner. So yes, for that you should have a clear idea of dental age. Yes, we discussed so many times in our class about dental age. So what you put in this answer? Okay, okay. Let's start here like, like this. So by two and a half years. Total number of teeth, 20. So, all primary, these are the 
primary teeth so all primary teeth erupt by the age of by the age of two and half year now three four five six not a single teeth erupt not exfoliate teeth remain 20 what happened at seven year first permanent molar erupt so what is the age of eruption of first permanent molar it is seven year so if we make the diagram this is central incisor this is lateral incisor this is canine molar one molar two so one tooth represent four because here also central incisor here also central incisor here also central incisor so this is the picture at two and half year and same picture at six year 20 teeth are there in six year old child now when first permanent molar erupt so teeth become 24 teeth become 24 now see here is the crux 8 9 10 11 12 each year four primary teeth replaced by four permanent teeth so eight year central incisor gone permanent incisor lateral incisor permanent incisor 10 year canine permanent canine 11 molar permanent premolar permanent premolar so teeth will remain how much 24 13 year second molar erupt and after 17 to 18 year any time third molar erupt so we got it got it now come to the question again we will come on again see so they are asking first molar so you all know first molar erupt by the age of when the first molar erupt seven year so it will go like this first we choose easy one third molar yes third molar when the third molar erupt 17 to 25 year of age any time after 17 18 year so these two are very much clear so c will go with d c will go with one and D will go with 4. Okay. Now, what about canines? What about canines? Canines. So, we just discussed canine. 11 to 10 year. And lateral incisor comes little early. 8 to 9 year. See here. 8, 9. 9, lateral incisor. 9 is the S for lateral incisor. So, no confusion in this. No confusion. No confusion. Yes, see here. Again, see. Canine. 11 year. Lateral incisor. 8 or 9 year. First molar. 7 year. Third molar. Any time beyond. 18 year. Am I clear? Now, choose the choices choose the choices so a will go with the this is the question take little time a will go with the three so a will go with the three now b will go with the two b will go with the two now first molar c will go with the one c will go with the one and third molar go with the four so this will go with the so, if you know one of the clearly, na, this question have a trick. Everybody know third molar at 15 to 17. So, D will go with the 4. So, just exclude the choice where D is not written with the 4. 
this can't be there examiner is an intelligent so b c d everywhere they put d4 and second easiest is this c comes with the first molar one first molar with come with the one c with one so here c is with three so this we can rule out so that's the way either you know all very correctly then you need to choose otherwise if one or two you will know na so you can easily exclude you can easily exclude b can't go with the a so d means third molar will not come at six to seven year of age so this is easily can be excluded this is the another way to do these type of question to do these type of question eruption of teeth with their respective ages answer this question if you work in the pediatric ward na this question will be easy for you yes sohel adil mobin what is the answer of this question what are the requirement of cannula insertion in a newborn third molar cannot come before first sir logic yes 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 this is the logic okay but to some answer moral don't get puzzled there are many way to make the correct answer this is the correct logic like that if you don't know anything na with this logic what soel has written you can exclude very well two three choices this is the way this is the way now see what are the requirement for cannula insertion in newborn it means you have seen the cannula see this is the cannula if you work in the ward basically pediatrician use the maximum number of cannula because adult are used mainly 16 or 14 but for a pediatrician 26 gauge cannula used in the neonate in the primary preterms these are used in the neonate mainly preterms then 24 gauge is also in neonate 22 gauge it is blue cannula which is used in the infant then 20 gauge used in the children's 18 gauge children above than 10 year of age 16 gauge for adults and 14 gauge for even adults so yes so 22 gauge is a big cannula for a neonate yes neonate either we use 26 or we use 24 so it is very clear so this is not used now if you are putting a cannula it's best practice to make a take a gloves you can use 26 gauge cannula yes when you put the cannula you should have a syringe and saline to push whether it's going because sometime in a neonate as soon as you put the cannula blood is not coming back as forcefully as in adults so yes you put the cannula you think if you drop a seam it's okay it's a 1 kg baby then you need it's okay you need a syringe and a normal saline to make a push yes fluid is going no swelling is there yes you put a cannula yes that's the pediatrics my friend this this is the neonatology yes we fight with the children from 1 kg to 80 kg babies yes 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 obesity 15 year child can have a 50, 80 kg weight so yes the most difficult to put cannula in a neonate in a preterm baby such thin vein and you need a skill yes 22 gauge is used in an infant not in the neonate if you work in the nursery na if you work in your ward na so it's very clear when your senior and sometime you also try to put the cannula if you are putting you always ask sister sister give me 24 give me 26 you will never ask 22 in a newborn newborn so which are requirement all are required except 22 gauge cannula 20 all are true except a a is the answer okay so these are the cannula size so remember them now this is the x ray i want answer this is the question what answer you have put
okay adil no problem one day you will work then this will remain in your mind if you put a cannula and a neonate ask always 26 and 24 yes if you just know the basic thing basic what is seeing in this x-ray what you are seeing in this x-ray boot shaped heart what you are seeing boot shaped heart now read the question three month baby suspected or having congenital heart disease saturation 80 percent s1 normal s2 single ejection stolic murmur but it's a cyanotic baby x-ray shown in the pic what x-ray is showing what x-ray is showing it shows boot shaped heart boot shaped heart in a cyanotic baby uh, child but two points are there right ventricular dominance right axis deviation it is out i believe this is not the question for inict it is the easiest question yes it is answer is tetralogy of fallet so different x-ray last year inict they asked this is the x-ray boot shaped heart they ask this x-ray third number x-ray this is figure of eight or snowman appearance this is box shaped heart this is box shaped heart this is egg on side appearance this is boot shaped heart this is figure of eight or snowman appearance so these are the classical x-ray trust my word snowman or figure of eight last two year they are continuously asking in neat pg and inict this time surprise for me they ask boot shaped heart in top so you should remember box shaped heart present in epstein anomaly h on side appearance present in PGA. Snowman or figure of 8. TAPVC. Boot shaped heart. In top. So remember na. Remember. Epstein. TGA. TAPVC. Top. Box shaped. Agon site. Snowman. Figure of 8. And boot shaped heart. Clear. So these pictures are clear. These type of questions, you have no excuse. Yes, my friend, you are giving a competitive exam. You are preparing for competitive exam. So these should be on your tips. Now, something more I want to teach you here. Synotic child. Now, whether you need to decide whether it is increase pulmonary blood flow or it is decrease pulmonary blood flow how can you identify two parameters are there increase pulmonary blood flow if you look chest x-ray you find plethoric lung field decrease pulmonary blood flow chest x-ray oligemic lung field increase pulmonary blood flow you have history of recurrent RTI and CHF. Decrease pulmonary blood flow. You have history of sinusis increase when child cry. Mother tell sinusis increase when child is crying. It is decreased pulmonary blood flow. Child has every year, every month, every week recurrent RTI, child tachypneic, increased sweating, not able to feed, interrupted feeding, signs of CHF, you are dealing with increased pulmonary blood flow. So, I am concentrating on decreased pulmonary blood flow. Now, decreased pulmonary blood flow, you need to see two things. Yes, whether it is RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy, right ventricular dominance or right axis deviation, then it has to be tetralogy of fallet in 
cyanotic CHD decrease pulmonary blood flow if you find LV dominance or left axis deviation then it has to be tricuspid atresia tricuspid atresia so INI, INI, INICT this time very cool for you people they ask our right ventricular dominance right axis deviation x-ray boot shaped heart I considered this is one of the easiest question because all know this this is tough if they put this question this way left axis deviation LV apex then it has to be tricuspid atresia so remember these are the simple thing so many times discuss in the class handedness appear cannula used in the neonate cyanotic CHD boot shaped heart all x-rays I have discussed in my previous classes so these questions are helpful for you though have attempted and those planning for next exam be there these are the correct answer now now, now. answer straight from our question bank easiest question I will say anybody proximal muscle weakness so yes it is myopathy muscle disease but see what is this what is this what is this gotten spectacles so it's not scabies so just read the question carefully proximal muscle weakness and these finding proximal muscle weakness and these finding this is dermatomyositis juvenile dermatomyositis itis it's a muscle inflammation so general feature because it's an inflammatory disease fever malaise anorexia weight loss irritability clear but you can't make the diagnosis of dermatomyositis without skin finding without cutaneous finding helitropic rash rash over nose over eyelid helitropic rash and gotten's papules gotten's papule helitropic rash and gotten papules weakness proximal muscle weakness Hel gotten papules helitropic rash general systemic finding of inflammation fever malaise anorexia weight loss this is dermatomyositis never forget this is gotten papules and this is volacious rash over eyelids over eyelids volacious rash cheek okay so see dermatological manifestation it's a dermatomyositis myositis proximal muscle weakness involved itis signs of inflammation of muscle and dermato gotten spapule and helitropic rash this is again a classical question of INICT yes dermato myositis I don't think students who have attended the class take more than 10 seconds to answer this question fraction of second see the picture proximal muscle weakness it is dermatobiositis if you don't hurt this word uh, so your first answer will be scabies or scleroderma it's not scabies proximal muscle weakness gotten papules it is dermatomyositis answer all are poor prognostic factor for ALL so many times so many times in our classes we have discussed good and poor prognostic factor of ALL poor prognostic factor presentation of age less than one year more than 10 years male child presentation count TLC more than 50,000 platelet less than 30,000 poor prognostic patient poor prognostic if a child presented to you with lymph adenopathy hepatosplenomegaly cns involvement mediastinal mass cns or testis involvement poor prognostic factor these are easy to remember these are poor prognostic factor 
एज लेस देन वन मोर देन टेन मेल चाइल्ड प्रेजेंटेशन काउंट मोर देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड प्रेजेंटेशन प्लेट लेस देन थर्टी थाउजेंड लिंपेटिनोपैथी मीडिया स्टनल मास सीन एस इन्वॉल्वमेंट मीडिया स्टनल मास बट द फैक्टर्स इन विच क्वेश्चन कम्स ऑन क्वेश्चन कम्स ऑन दीज फैक्टर्स यस वॉट आर द ट्रांसलोकेशन एसोसिएटेड विथ पुअर प्रोग्नोस्टिक ट्रांसलोकेशन नाइन ट्वेंटी टू फेलेडेल्फिया ट्रांसलोकेशन एट फोर्टीन बर्केट लिम्फोमा पुअर प्रोग्नोसिस ट्रांसलोकेशन फोर इलेवन पुअर प्रोग्नोसिस दीज ट्रांसलोकेशन कैरीज पुअर प्रोग्नोसिस सो विच ट्रांसलोकेशन कैरीज गुड प्रोग्नोसिस एनीबडी इन द कमेंट बॉक्स एनीबडी इन द कमेंट बॉक्स विच ट्रांसलोकेशन इन ए एल एल कैरीज गुड प्रोग्नोसिस ट्रांसलोकेशन ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी वन इट्स गुड टू रिमेंबर ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी वन गुड टू रिमेंबर गुड टू रिमेंबर ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी वन इट्स ए गुड प्रोग्नोस्टिक फैक्टर गुड सो यस हेयर एज लेस देन वन इज ए पुअर ट्रांसलोकेशन नाइन ट्वेंटी टू इज ए पुअर ट्रांसलोकेशन फोर इलेवन इज ए पुअर नाउ हाइपर डिप्लॉइडी नंबर ऑफ क्रोमोजोम्स इंक्रीज इंस्टेड ऑफ फोर्टी सिक्स दे आर फोर्टी सेवन फोर्टी एट फोर्टी नाइन हाइपर डिप्लॉयडी हाइपर डिप्लॉयडी इज ऑलवेज कंसिडर्ड एज ए गुड प्रोग्नोस्टिक फैक्टर हाइपो डिप्लॉयडी इज ए पुअर प्रोग्नोस्टिक फैक्टर हाइपो डिप्लॉयडी इज ए पुअर प्रोग्नोस्टिक फैक्टर बट हाइपर डिप्लॉयडी इज ए गुड प्रोग्नोस्टिक फैक्टर एम आई क्लियर हाइपर डिप्लॉयडी is a good prognostic factor so these are some universal question we have discussed so many times so many times and i always tell in my class these are you have to remember good and poor prognostic factor translocation no concept is there you need to remember you need to remember these are the good and poor prognostic factor in all if question come like this yes this question i have seen fourth fifth time in last 10 to 12 year no excuse you have to do it um so no 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 411 is a poor prognostic hitesh 411 is a poor prognostic if you are sure then i will recheck it but i am sure you also recheck okay hitesh so method to measure height in a 4 year old child have you heard the word infantometer this infantometer we make the baby lie here so with this head is fixed so one end is fixed this end is movable so we make the baby lie on this and measure the height length of the baby this is infantometer infantometer but you all know how to measure the height but you forget the word in the exam that is stadiometer it's very simple no? stand here stand here and head is here so this figure this can move up and down based on the head you can make it and see the reading here this will be the weight this will be the height stadiometer to measure the height in a 4 year old child this is stadiometer So this is also a simple question. Yes, Hitesh, stadiometer. I am not remember the C and D choice because somebody is answering crown rump length here. Can you help me? What are the other two choices there? Method of measurement of height in four year old child. Can you help me? One is infantometer. Another is stadiometer. What are the other choice? No, Hitesh. i will again check if you are saying pathological educator are saying i will also check don't worry we all are learning but i say 411 is the poor prognosis so this is the method to measure height in a 4 year old child stadiometer now no no answer this question yes straight we have discussed this question when we are discussing this question in our previous class i told this question comes in jipmer exam yes but now no jipmer everything is i n i c e t so what you answer in this parvovirus yes parvovirus is a slab 
cheek appearance. Condition known as erythema infectiosum. Erythema infectiosum. Yes, it is there in parvovirus infection. A plastic crisis. There in parvovirus infection. Non-immune hydrops fetalis. There. SLE. PP. GSS. Glove and stocks syndrome. Purpuric pruritic. Glove and sock syndrome is there in parvovirus but in choices few learner told me they put word SLE in front of this then this will be not the answer yes what parvovirus causes parvovirus causes erythema infectiosum which is known as fifth disease it leads to slab cheek appearance red cheeks that somebody Slap the cheek, slapped cheek appearance. Acute or persistent arthropathy. Papular, purpuric eruption on hand and feet, known as glove socks syndrome in adults. Then, pure red cell aplasia, a plastic crisis. Pure red cell aplasia and non immune hydrops vitalis. If you recall, these are the five manifestations of parvovirus B19. SLE is nowhere in this. So, it's non-immune. Non-immune hydrospitalis. So, yes, it causes PPSSG. Papular purpuric glove and sock syndrome. But in association with SLE, I go with except D. Not correct is D. If you have any other choices or any other confusion, put me. Immune hydrops, yes, immune hydrops in RH, yes. There are so many causes of non-immune hydrops fetalis. One of them is parvovirus B19. Remember, this is typical INICET question. Answer this. Answer this. What you have answered in this? All are true about hereditary spherocytosis, except... I am not getting the correct words in this. Maybe it's a multiple choice. But one thing is clear. High MCH is pathognomic of hereditary spherocytosis. It's not correct. It's MCHC increase is hereditary spherocytosis. It's not. B is not correct. And if you remove the spleen, so no hemolysis is there. So no chance of gallstone. So this is also not correct. Splenectomy does not protect. No splenectomy protect. So what's the advantage? You remove the spleen and hemolysis is still going on and patient having gallstone. So B and D is not correct. Yes, gallstone develop after 4 to 5 years of age. When repeated hemolysis is there, gallstone can develop. And at least 25% patient have family history of hereditary spherocytosis. Yes, it is a autosomal dominant disease. So, A and C is correct. If any other choices, it's a multiple choice question. I don't know whether it's asked in the first shift or second shift. Because I uh, get few controversies in choices. But it's better to discuss. So, some who attend may come with the better answers. Now, this question was there. We discussed so many times teratogenic drugs in our class. Yes, lithium causes abstinence anomaly of heart. At least 100 times we discussed this question. Okay, so now warfarin causes hypoplasia of nasal bone. So question is like that only. That framework, like the teeth question. Drug teratogenic effect match the following. So, I didn't get the fourth choices. So, I put it like this. Warfarin is causing hypoplasia of the nasal bone. Lithium leads to abstinence anomaly of the heart. Thalidomide. Focomelia. You know the history of thalidomide? Thalidomide drug prescribes in the pregnant lady who have a tendency
ओके जिशान ओके लेट सी डोंट बी डिसार्टेड 1950 to 1960, when pregnant lady have nausea, so thalidomide is a very good drug to prevent the feeling of nausea. Then what they seen, the patient who taken thalidomide, baby develop problem in the limbs. Whole limb is not there, radius is not there, thumb is not there, lower limb is not there. Phocomelia. Then this drug is banned immediately. Banned. So few years initial pre PG, you find a so many question. Which drug leads to phocomelia? Thalidomide. Thalidomide. This is lithium causes acid anomaly of heart. This question is absolute now. So many times they ask in previous, but now you people are unintelligent. You want something more. So can anybody tell me what is the fourth choice? What is the fourth drug and teratogenic effect given in the question? If anybody know this, you can uh, tell me in my telegram group so I can update the question bank. So I didn't get the fourth, fourth, which is the fourth drug and their teratogenic effect. Now, this question was there. When learner posed this question to me, they clear one line below bed that uh, this every aspect is discussed in pathology class. So, okay. It's okay for me. Yes. So see, 10 year old boy, hemoglobin 7.5 gram percent anemic. MCV 56 means low. MCH 22 again low. So hypochromic microcytic anemia. Okay. Ferritin is 150. Ferritin is 150. Some are saying normal value also given 130 to 140. It means ferritin is increased. Ferritin is increased. So it's a hypochromic microcytic anemia where ferritin is not decreased at least. It's slightly increased but not decreased. So iron deficiency anemia rule out. Nothing suggestive of sickle cell anemia is there. So this is also rule out. No sickling, not other test is given. Now we left with two, thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease and any given days. Anemia of chronic disease, normochromic, normocytic is more common than microcytic hypochromic. So in this anemia is microcytic hypochromic. One another thing, just think, this is I I C T. Anemia of chronic disease in inflammation, in inflammation, anemia of chronic disease occur in inflammation. Just a minute. Anemia of chronic disease occur in inflammation. So when inflammation is there, so TLC should be increased. But here, 7600, lymphocyte 65, so normal in a child. So it can't be anemia of chronic disease. So what we left with? Thalassemia. Thalassemia. Microcytic hypochromic anemia. Yes. Serum ferritin increase. Anemia is there. So most probable answer thalassemia. When I get this question, because 10 year old boy, it's a pediatric question. No. Yeah, it's you can con consider this question in pediatrics and maybe pathology. So learner specifically put in my group that pathology educator discuss this question very well. So maybe so that make my job easy. But this is my take in this. This is thalassemia. This is thalassemia. Now is this question was there in your exam? Growth hormone not include. Hormone not, growth hormone not involved in the growth of the fetus. Yes, which hormone? Its growth hormone is not involved in the growth of the fetus. A very good question in the exam. A child born with 
congenital deficiency of growth hormone all are present except a child born with congenital deficiency of growth hormone all are present yes they have a small penis they have a hypoglycemia they have midline defect but their birth weight is normal so which hormone is not needed for growth of the fetus growth of the fetus it's growth hormone fetus growth is mainly regulated by fetus growth is mainly regulated by insulin and insulin like growth factors that's why in front of diabetic mother when you have more insulin in the baby so they are macrosomic overweight babies okay so just remember hormone not involved in the growth of the fetus is growth hormone growth hormone answer this question very simple na huh? this was asked in neat pg 2021 yes amenorrhea short stature hypoplastic uterus streak gonads fsh lh increase what is the diagnosis simplest of all i hope everybody make it right this is turner syndrome turner syndrome clear na so this question is like after you comes in every exam what you want that's the good thing na but what are the other syndrome kalaman syndrome just remember one line just delayed or absent puberty and impaired sense of smell kalaman syndrome delayed puberty or impaired sense of smell mayer rokentenchi kuscher huser syndrome in your mrk mrk syndrome yes this syndrome uterus and vagina is not formed uterus and vagina is not formed all other organs are well formed of female genital tract but uterus and vagina not formed under developed or non existence uterus and vagina so normally function ovary and female chromosomal pattern when ovary function normally to all the secondary sexual character pubic hair breast develop normally but that lady not able to carry on the pregnancy because uterus and vagina is not there so one this is the typical of inict they find few choices of some rare syndrome but we are also after that okay we try to clear all these syndromes androgen insensitivity syndrome when a person genetically male resistant to male hormone androgens androgen insensitivity syndrome it's a male <coughs> genetic makeup of male but traits of female so clear androgen insensitivity syndrome mrk syndrome kalaman syndrome answer is simple and this is the purpose na when we discuss some question you get the answer here turner syndrome but be there try to go all the choices try to go with all the choices yes what are in those choices these are typically yes i can say we discuss turner syndrome but what are others we need to so no so this is typically ini ct paper <coughs> one question from milestone one from cardiology hematology syndromes some practical questions like cannula in a neonate so these are the typical ini ct pattern so ini ini ct gone don't depress no worries no worries exam is continue learning is continue yes so keep reading let's crack it trust on us trust on god and most important trust on yourself sometime some day you will definitely get choice your dream branch your dream college let's wait this may be not the time those who done well it's okay suppose you tried but miss few questions 
So just work with your mistake. Just work, uh, work with your mistake and be there. Next exam is always there. Okay. So keep reading. Let's crack it. Best wishes for you for future exam. Be there. Keep reading. Keep learning with an academy. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless you all. God